Hello and welcome to another review and how to play. Today we're going to be looking at Final Fantasy 1. I'm going to be playing it on Final Fantasy 1 and 2 Dawn of Souls for the Game Boy Advance. But we're just going to be looking at the Final Fantasy 1 game within this. So, quick overview. Um, the Dawn of Souls Game Boy Advance game does come with Final Fantasy 1, Final Fantasy 2, and a bestiary which you can look at um, all the monsters in each game that you've seen. And I've gone through and have collected all of the characters, but I don't even remember where I was with some of these things. Anyway, you pick your file and it shows you uh, all the monsters that you've seen. You also can, after you've, I think after you've beaten both games or something, you unlock the uh, the music player so you can just sit here and, and listen to music if you really want to. Let's go ahead and get into the game so you can see how the game is played. Alright, well, let's go ahead and just check out a new game real quick. Yeah, it's just telling me I can't uh, save. Anyway, so here you start the game off by picking your party, which you can make um, warrior, thief, monk, red mage, white mage, and black mage. The black mage is like your, uh, your main offensive magic. White mage is mainly defensive magic. The red mage sort of has a mixture of both, but doesn't have the strongest of either type. Red Mage doesn't have the strongest offensive magic or the strongest defensive magic, but does have both types of magic. The Monk is um, a fist fighter. Uh, the Monk is the only class that doesn't learn any magic whatsoever, but they do have the... I can't really say if they have the highest attack. They have the highest attack power in the early game, but uh, by late game, uh, they could probably be comparable to the warriors uh, armor uh, attack power so warriors and thieves um, warriors have a higher base you know attack power and then um, they can learn some uh, defensive magic later and then uh, the thief is similar in that except they have a much they have a bit of a lower attack power and they can learn some offensive magic later but, I mean, the Thief is still stronger than either the White Mage or the Black Mage with normal attacks. Because magic takes MP, which uh, is a resource that you need. And then you can even change your class, you can change your party to be all warriors or all monks, all anything you want. You can pick the worst team ever and just be all White Mages. Um, but yeah, that is how it goes. But let's go ahead and get into it. Oh, they all need names. Uh, there is, in this version, uh, an auto name pick. Wow. Those are the random names it just picked for me. I mean, you can press it again. That's probably... Um, you can press it again to keep picking names. Wow, those first few ones that came up were all uh, names that were also used in FF9. So yeah, you can just sit here and press select. I wonder if it's like, uh, oh yeah, I guess it's dependent on uh, your job class. There's only a certain batch of names you can get. Wow, I think I randomized all the way back to uh, my original. So yeah, the bank, the name bank isn't super deep. But yeah, you just uh, pick your party. And then this is new. It gives you a bit of a story of what's going on. When I say new, I mean it's not in the original NES version of the game. like. In the NES version of the game, once you pick your party, you just go straight into the game. This cutscene isn't in it. So basically, what's going on in the world here is that the the forces of nature are I don't know. It's like the the wind, the seas rage, but the wind dies. Um, basically, the world, and then here the earth rots. So the world. Uh, all forces of nature are just 
or the earth decays, I'm sorry. The, the earth is falling apart in some way, and um, the actual reason it has to do with some crystals. Somewhere there's a prophecy about four warriors of light to come. They're all going to have a, a little crystal in their hand. Uh, in the original NES version, the translation was orb, but Final Fantasy has since become obsessed with crystals. Everything is crystals, crystals, crystals in Final Fantasy games. So, you just are basically a band of four travelers who just show up in this uh, country. You have the crystals as foretold in the prophecy. Uh, there's no real explanation of where you came from, but look, here you, here you are in the world. Why can't I move? Oh, there we go. That was weird. So yeah, this is the game. You uh, can press start to open up your uh, menu here so you can look at the stuff that you have. There's a whole bunch of stuff like magic. I don't have anything right now. But um, let's go ahead and uh, check out uh, the town. So you come in here and all of a sudden you're in the town. Um, this is the normal walking speed of the game, however you can hold the B button now to run. And again, when I say now, I mean it's not... This is something new to this version of the game that wasn't in the original NES version. In fact, under the config menu, if you want to have B button dash on, that means you'll just always run, and you then uh, can't walk anymore. I mean, you don't really need to walk too often, but if you if you do find a reason you need to walk, you can turn it back off. But right now it'll just automatically run for me. So here, this is a white magic shop. So you can, so you don't learn spells from leveling up in this game or anything, like uh, most other RPGs, I would say. Instead, you buy your spells. And in fact, uh, the way it goes, see there are four different spells here. On the far right, it shows you who can learn them. Um, so it says Red Mage, White Mage, Knight, Red Wizard, and White Wizard. So there is a point in the game. Uh, it's not at a set point in the game. You have to find this place after a certain point in the game where you can upgrade your characters. So the white mage will become a white wizard, and the red mage will become a red wizard. The warrior that I have right now at the front of my party will become a knight, which is when uh, they can then learn some defensive spells, white magic spells. So as you can see, the knight can't learn everything. Uh, some names are uh, blanked out. Well, not blanked, they're like uh, faded instead of highlighted. Right, right here, only the white mage and the white wizard can learn but uh, all five of those classes on the fright can learn cure. Now, you can see there is uh, spell names level 1 and then 50. 50 is just the cost of uh, gill that's going to cost me to buy the spell. I have 500 gill, you can see right there on the right. But um, looking at my character real quick, um, there are actually three spell slots. So, in the level 1 section here, there's level 2, 3, 4, all the way to 8. Uh, only level 1 is highlighted, which means I can only learn level 1 spells. And on top of that, I only have 3 spell slots, which means I can only learn 3 spells of the level 1 type. So there are 4 spells here possible. I can only learn 3 of them. I'm definitely going to take Cure. And that equal sign shows that I actually have the spell already. Dia. Protect. And then blink. I think I'm going to take Dia. It's good against undead foes like zombies. And then I'm going to take. Mm, I'll take blink. So yeah, that is all I can buy here. And similar thing over here in the black mage shop. There are four possible spells. I only have three slots. I'm going to take. Fire, mm, ooh, sleep, and thunder, for sure. Focus doesn't seem too great. 
And then outside of those two spells, there is also uh, weapon and armor shops. The sword is the weapon shop, and here you can buy weapons. The equal sign means that you have it already, so your characters come equipped with some weapons already. But then there are some weapons you can also buy. Interesting, there's a rapier and a hammer. Both are have the green arrow up for the warrior. I wonder which one is better. Rapier to 14. Uh, the rapier is better. You can even hit optimal in case you're not sure, like I have the hammer on. Hit optimal, put the rapier on. Oh wait, I don't want to sell those quite yet. Um, I did buy a hammer. Uh, let's go ahead and buy a second rapier. And a... Oh wait! The black mage could equip a staff, which the white mage has, so if I just go through here and um, optimize everybody, they'll all have different, they'll all have uh, their best stuff on. I don't even have to buy something for everyone, because they just trade around and just get rid of my three knives. Get some of my money back. And that looks good. Similar thing with the armor shops over here. You kind of want to go through here, especially this game in particular, and get these... Um, uh, shop, should get your shopping done out of the way first, just because um, you go outside of town and get into a fight with monsters or something and you're going to get destroyed. Um, let me see, uh, save, you can also save at any point, I'll just go ahead, save over this file, it doesn't look like I was, look like I was doing anything there. And if you may have noticed yet, uh, all my exits are currently blocked by people. That is because uh, by entering town, they want to force me into the story, which is um, the king wants to see me. And so uh, they're not going to let me leave town until I see the king. Because they recognize who I am. So here, um, I can actually just... I'm just going to skip over this dialogue. I'm just going to like... So normally, you can just sit here and watch the... the the words pop out slowly like that or you can just press the button to have it all come out at once or I can try to sit here and mash the button to uh, talk faster oh so what the king is actually telling me is that um, his daughter has been kidnapped by um, a uh, traitor his daughter Sarah has been um, cap kidnapped by a traitor a garland he was one of the, the king's knights and he just kidnapped his daughter took him took her out to uh, an old castle out there somewhere. In fact, under configuration, uh, you can change the uh, the message speed. Lower numbers for faster display. If I put it to one, I'm pretty sure people will just talk instantly in town. Let's go ahead and test that out. Yeah, see? So now uh, words are out there automatically. Instead, if I had uh, message speed set to four, then it comes out very slowly. I can always still uh, press the button again to make it come out faster, but I'm just going to go ahead and put that down to one. And then here, window color, you can actually change the color of your window if you want. You know, if you want to change it to different colors or something. Suit uh, whatever you want. I'm just going to go ahead and put it back to the default there. And then the bestiary, this shows what I've seen so far, which I haven't gotten into any fights yet, so I, I haven't seen any monsters yet. Go ahead and save again. And now let's go ahead and get to a battle so you know how the battle system works. So this is also slightly different from uh, the original version. But uh, for the most part, uh, you you get your party, you uh, pick what you want to do. By default, I don't have any magic here. Uh, I don't really have any items either. You can uh, pick from your equipment. Like if uh, your equipment has like a special skill attached to it, you can do that. Or you can change equipment. I guess. Or you can tell yourself to flee, which will be on an individual basis. And then uh, you can also just attack. So that's probably what we're going to do here. So these are not undead monsters, so this is not going to do anything. But I will go ahead and put on... Raises Caster's Evasion. Oh! I misread that. It. Um, I thought it was going to be for anybody I wanted, but it's only going to be for my white mage. So my black mage is the one I am most worried about dying because uh, how low H, 
how low H how many how few hit points uh, he or she has. Um, I say that because of the name Stella is throwing me off. <laughs> so yeah, you get experience points and money for every fight that you do. Um, this is a very old school um, game in the sense that you kind of do have to hang out around town and just sort of beat monsters for a little while. You can't just go straight to the boss or straight to go rescue the princess. You do sort of have to do some grinding right here in the very beginning. I would recommend it anyway. Um, after this point, you don't really have to grind anymore, uh, so long as you keep upgrading uh, your equipment and such. But just right here in the very beginning, I would say you do kind of have to grind a little bit. Oh, so yeah, we uh, when we level up, it tells us at the top of the screen, you know, what's happening, what's increasing. Uh, it tells you exactly how many hit points HP uh, goes up and MP. But uh, the other stats like intelligence, um, those just go up and they don't really tell you exactly how many points they go up. Ooh, preemptive strike. That means um, I get a full round of turns without the enemy just getting a turn. And also what you can do for convenience is just hold down the A button to instantly select attack. Or if you have uh, in your config, if you have the cursor um, go to memory, then it'll remember what you do for each character on their turn. So you could just hold down the button and do different things. Uh, but it would be the same move for each character on on their uh following turn, which I don't know how often that would be a good thing to do. So let's go ahead and, um, well, they'll be out here. There we go. So what you can do when you're looking at your character, if you're wondering about leveling up, uh, you see next level 11 experience points. It's currently the same for everybody. And uh, formation, you can also um, rearrange your party if you really want to. Equipment, you can change equipment if you find something out uh, when you're exploring. You can just equip it right here. And of course, you can always save. Remember to save because I believe if you get a game over, you go back to the title screen. So there's no like checkpoints or anything. It's all dependent on when you manually save. Let's go ahead and use a spell cure that uh, missing HP on Stella. So once you do rescue the princess, um, that's when the actual game sort of uh, happens. The king restores this uh, bridge here. And when you cross the bridge, it gives you like an opening uh, little scene with some, some uh, text scroll where it kind of explains the actual story of the game going forward, which is kind of neat. But yeah, it is a little bit before that happens. You just have to go rescue the princess first. I just want to get to the next level before I stop this. And then I will go ahead and show you a more advanced section of the game. There we go. Level up. So when you are, say prepared to go on to the next part of the game. There's inns in each town, which uh, you come in here and you pay a small fee. This place is 30 gil. Later places will just have higher fees, even though it's technically the same service. Um, but here you just come in and you rest and it'll restore all your HP and MP. So another thing uh, different from uh, the original game is MP. And that this game, it's more like uh, the other modern Final Fantasy games where uh, when you use spells, it takes MP. Like I have 30 MP right now on my White Mage and using a spell, uh, the Cure spell costs 3 MP. Uh, Dia costs 5, Blink costs 3, 5, 3, and 5 for those spells. And when you run out of MP, you can't cast any spells anymore. You have to have enough MP to cast each particular spell. And so... In the original game on the NES, I believe it was um, uh, you had a limited number of times you could cast uh, spells, and it was different for each spell level. 
it was kind of um, confusing, but I guess it's more similar to um, Dungeons and Dragons in that respect. At least it was back then. Um, this right here is an actual addition to the game. Oops, that cave right there. I want to point that out because this is um, an additional area of the game that wasn't in the original. So the this Game Boy Advance version of Final Fantasy One does add some extra dungeons in it, and they are um, sort of they are optional dungeons and they have some unique re rewards inside them. So like the Earth Gift Shrine, this place doesn't get unlocked until you defeat the, um, the, uh, this is a statue of the, the boss guarding the Earth Crystal. When you defeat that boss, then this dungeon will open up and it'll show you when you defeat the boss um, that the dungeon is open. And inside is sort of, there are random, there are, a bunch of different um, dungeon floors that have been pre-made and you'll randomly get certain a certain order of dungeon floors to advance through and then there'll be a boss fight and each of these there's one of these optional dungeons for each crystal um it's so like the earth one here it's got like a certain number of floors and then you fight a boss and then another certain number of floors and you fight another boss uh, actually, at those two boss points, uh, there's an option of which of two bosses you want to fight. So you kind of have to go through this dungeon twice to get all the bosses for your bestiary. Um, but it's much shorter than the other dungeons, because uh, like the Wind Crystal Dungeon, which is the last one, I believe, you would normally unlock. It's a straight go through all the floors, and there's a boss every so many floors, and you go through and fight four bosses. So they added four bosses for each of those uh, optional dungeons. To add into the game. And um, so, I mean, there is something to uh, the design of like random battles. Obviously, they can be annoying if you're trying to just go from one point to another. But I guess it's sort of. You can argue in the in the um the way that the storytelling way that it's sort of telling you you do have to traverse and do some fights before you can actually get to some place you know it's not just a free walk anywhere you go so this is um you, uh, this is the place where garland is hiding out and there are some random battles in here too uh if they run into me and then um uh these treasure chests are good to pick up because you know they got treasure in them um, this is actually a very small uh, place here, and Garland's just sitting right in the middle. I could have just walked straight up to him instead of going around to get these treasures, but I do want to get them because, you know, they got some good good stuff in them. And depending on how many random battles I get into will determine sort of how long it takes me to get there. Ooh. Oh yes, this story has been bound by the Mystic Key. So the Mystic Key is a item that you get at a particular place and then there's these doors like all over the the world that are just locked by the mystic key and you can't open them until you get that mystic key oh i got ambushed which means the monsters part the monster party all gets a turn before i get to do anything well, i guess i should note um the order the turn order in battle is kind of random it isn't exactly random uh, your your characters individual your individual character speeds do have some influence on who goes first, but there's sort of like a random number thrown in on top of that, so it's possible for other characters to go before you. So when planning your attacks, if you have a more complex turn order sequence, like you want one person to cure and another person to defend and another person to cast a spell on a particular enemy, and then the other person does a normal attack, that can be. That may not come out in the order that you want it to happen. And then you don't know if you're all going to go before the monster gets a turn to do something. What that ghoul did to my main character, my, my warrior, is the... has a paralyzing attack. Oh yeah, so... Oh, these are zombies. I could be using Dia. So... Um... Something else with uh, enemies is that you can get into very cheap deaths at certain points. This is also a Mystic Key Door. Because some enemies will have like those paralyzed attacks 
In fact, there will be other places that have a lot of those paralyzed attacks. And if you get into a bad ambush or something, your entire party could be paralyzed and you could be doomed to just die. And as you can see, the random encounters are very random. Like, I could go long stretches without in a single attack and then I walk five feet and I uh, get another attack. And I've leveled up another time since I've been here, so that's pretty nice. I'm probably pretty well prepared to face Garland. Oh, but in terms of uh, being prepared for fights, you can also use these items, tents. These uh, tents in particular only restore a certain amount of HP and MP, but and they can only be used outdoors, so like on the world map. And then there's like another item called, I think it's Cabin. Those are like full HP MP restores that you can only use on the world map, like what I just did. Ooh, level five. It's nice to see like the change in level after you uh haven't saved in a little while. That's kind of neat to see sometimes. Just that uh thing in your brain that makes it makes you think like you're making progress. So this is this is Garland. This is the first boss of the game. Let's go ahead and prepare for this. The main objective here is to not lose a character because I just like to have all my characters level up at the same time. And if somebody dies at the end of the battle, they don't get experience points. So I want to avoid my characters dying at all costs. Um, go ahead and have my Black Mage just cast magic. I think I'm going to take him out pretty easily because I'm level 5. So you can see there's a big diversity in the attack strength of the characters. The mages basically do like almost no physical attacks, so you're kind of encouraged to use their spells, but the white mage doesn't have attack spells until... The white mage gets like one attack spell at the very late game. As you can see there, I've rescued the princess. But let's go ahead and skip this. I'm going to soft reset. Let's go ahead and check out my end of game file real quick, just so you can see the more diversity of the combat. So in the very beginning of the game, it is pretty simple. Uh, you can see right here at the bottom of this, it says game clear. That is because once you beat the game, you can then save a file as game clear data, and that data can be started over. So if I select, if I load this, I can start a new game with all of my bestiary information. So you can sort of new game plus, but you only save your bestiary information if you really want to care about that. By that, I mean you come into your bestiary and you come in here, you can like rack up however many enemies you've killed. So like over however many files I've played with this, I've killed 500 goblins. And like, um, where's Garland? Yeah, so I've played this, I've played through this six times already because I've beaten Garland six times. So that's neat. And it gives you like, if you're looking for what they drop, you know, there's that. I'll it has all their stats, but I mean, it's mostly useless information. I mean, having their having their particular stats doesn't really help you. It does help you find treasure if you're like trying to f get some rare item or something. As you can see, HP does max out 999. It does not go over a thousand. Um, oh, in fact, I have a what was a warrior, thief, white mage, and monk. The monk became a master. And of course, the monk still does not gain any magic. So let's go ahead and get to a fight here real quick. If I can. Maybe there aren't any random battles on this floor. Strangely enough. So yeah, the, level, the dungeon design is kind of like this a lot, where um, there are some more open areas. Okay, this is a bad example place to uh, do this, but let's go ahead. What is this? Raise one allies evasion. So yeah, you can try to cast. Of course, silence isn't going to work on most bosses. It is sort of a sort of useless spell because um, anything that re removes an enemy's option of attack, that's really not going to work on most bosses. But um, you can always try. And as you can see, um, it's like my greatest spells are like Lazara and Haste and Confuse. 
and haste what that does is it um increases your number of attacks so it's actually kind of bad well as you may have noticed at the beginning um it says um hits when you're trying to um to it when you do a normal attack on enemies it does have like hits Ooh. So I'll try to sound and see if it works. Miss, of course. Haste will increase my number of attacks. This is the one white magic spell. So like there, 16 hit on the monk. Where if I cast haste. Haste is actually like an attack increase. Now it's 32, it's just like doubled. You can dish out more than a thousand HP damage, but you, you yourself can only carry a, th a 999 at most HP. As you saw there, uh, the White Mage still did only like six HP damage with the normal attack. The White Mage's attack power does not go up very far. So I am actually in a very unique part of the game. Oh, here we go. Here's some random battles. So yeah, uh, Thundara, so Thunder, as you saw, was like one attack, and then Thundara does all enemies. And like, uh, heal is an all party curing move, and the monk doesn't have any uh, magic. So yeah, I believe um, Thundara is like um, Thunder, but on all enemies, like it's the same strength as Thunder, but on, on, on all enemies, where, um, Thundaga, Thundaga, which is the third level of the the Thunder moves, those those tend to do um, actually more damage. No evasion alpha is cool. So yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff you can get in this game. It is sort of mostly go to the next place, go through a dungeon of enemies. There isn't really a whole lot of developing story, like there aren't any plot twists until... There aren't really any plot twists. I mean, I guess you could say there is one, but... Um, I'm not going to talk about it. Um, what else is there to say? It is kind of a basic... If you've played other Final Fantasy games, this is a very basic Final Fantasy game. Um, I do like it a lot. It's very fun in how simple it is. I guess how straightforward it is. It is like a fun kind of, um, just go to the next place. You just, you just know where you're supposed to go most of the time. Um, once you do get an airship, you, it is a little bit of a hunt to try to figure out where to go next, which is fun. And then, yeah, I I don't know. I just think it's a I think it's a good game. I'm not trying like defend it or anything, but I just not sure how to express what I think. Let me see if I can soft reset here. I'm just trying to express how it doesn't really have like like your characters that you play as. They don't ever talk, so it's not really. It's just a very simple game even though the combat is also simple the exploration on the world map is kind of neat and then most dungeons are mostly straightforward although they do have some sort of uh, openness to some of them but other than that it's kind of uh, it's really the first Final Fantasy I mean it kind of I guess speaks for itself in that sense um, but I've had a lot of fun playing it um, even if it has a, even though it lacks technically like much of a story, it's the story is pretty basic. I keep going back to the story just because there's not really characters. You just make up your party of whoever you want them to be, and then you just go save the world, pretty much. Um, like there aren't side characters per se, just like the king and the daughter and Garland. Those like the most characters that you get in the whole game, and they're very in the very beginning of the game. Um, there's not really any other recurring characters other than your party, which you can, I guess it's fun to sort of make your party what it is and you get to name them all up front. So 
you kind of customize your experience in that way. That's kind of the fun part about it. Other than that, uh, if you have played Final Fantasy 1 before, in particular on the Game Boy Advance, uh, let me know in the comments below if there's anything I missed that people should know about. If uh, you haven't played Final Fantasy 1 before in any form, uh, let me know what you think of this review. If you have any questions about the game, you know, ask below in the comments and I'll answer them. And then, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.